Hi everyone, welcome to another puzzle from Jacob Agard's book, Excelling at Chess Calculation. This one is white to move, and the question asks, first it's in positions for deep in-depth calculations section, and it asks me, calculate the consequences of bishop c6, oop, I forgot to make it black to move, my bad. I'm going to reset this position. Basically, to calculate the, position, the consequences of this, followed by bishop takes g6. So this is what we're calculating from White's perspective. We're going to set the position up on the board. We'll, we'll start from not set up, if you want to do it for real. Uh, so calculating bishop c6, followed by bishop takes g6. First of all, what the heck? Is this even the right position? Can't we just take him c6? What? Oh, the rook's on a6. Oh my god, I can't set a position for my, save my life. Black rook is on a6, my bad. I'm a huge donkey. Alright, so calculate bishop c6, and bishop takes g6 from white's perspective. I'll try it for a bit without setting up the position, just to, uh... Uh, just to make our life eat, like, uh... Just to be realistic about it, but... In a minute or two, I'll start moving the pieces. So if he goes bishop c6, we take on on g6. If he takes our rook, I don't know, probably we can checkmate him somehow. Uh, let me see. Oh, probably something like... Hold on. No, oh, you know what? I'm going to move the pieces. Make our life easier. What the heck? Really? It still says black? Why am I so stupid? Why am I keep setting up the position wrong? You had to set it up so it's black to move. So here we go. I can't even speak to correctly either today, so very confusing times for me. Bishop takes g6. Now, there's a few possibilities here. Bishop takes rook allows a few options for white. Bishop f7 is one. Bishop h7 is one. We would like to clear the bishop so we can go queen h7 check. So like one common idea would be Bishop b7, bishop h7, king g7, bishop g8. And after rook g8, queen h7, king f8, bishop h6, king e8, queen h, queen g8, king d7. I don't see a follow-up there. It looks like okay for, for black. I'll go demonstrate that position now. King g7, bishop h6, rook takes g6. Oh, we have bishop h6 wins. Probably it wins. I mean, he has moves like uh, bishop h4. But it's like pretty pretty scary. <laughs> um, let me calculate it from here. Bishop f8, bishop h4, queen d2 is probably winning. I'll demonstrate that. Because we're threatening... Like if queen f8, rook h4, king g7, queen h6, and if rook f8, it's trickier. It's trickier there. Rook f8 might save the day, which is a problem. I should be doing this in my head. I'm just, you know, making our lives, I'm making it easier for you guys to follow the video. So, okay, it's something along these lines, like bishop c6, bishop g6. If he takes our bishop on g6, it's checkmate in one. So the real only line we need to calculate is bishop c6, bishop takes g6, bishop b7. Now, bishop h7, king g8, bishop g8 is the most common type of move in this position. He has a move like f5, but then we can go en passant, and somehow that's going to lead to disaster, I'm pretty sure. So... Probably the main line to look at is rook g8, bishop h6, king h8, and then something good. Um, bishop g5, king g7. Just trying to do this in my head. Sometimes it's easier when I'm not looking at the board. Uh, so I'm going to say bishop f8, bishop to h4 in that position. When we, we've gone bishop h6, he goes king h8. We go bishop f8, he goes bishop h4. Now, is there a good move for white in that position? F5. 
feels like there should be but I don't quite see it. Queen d2, rook f8. Queen h6. King g8, rook h4. He has queen d1 mate. <coughs> so, let's look at this again. Bishop c6, bishop g8, g6, bishop takes b7. So now we have, we have other options for sure. If bishop f7, rook f7, I don't see the follow-up there exactly. Huh. What to do, what to do. Not sure. All right, we're going to move the pieces on the board. It's, it's not so simple. However, we have at least a draw. So that's important to recognize. Um, by the way, bishop h6 here is this also good. I don't know why I was going bishop g8 like a donkey, but it still made sense. Uh, now the question is how do we win? Maybe bishop g5 looks pretty strong. Maybe this move is killer. Uh, it looks dangerous. If bishop takes, now bishop g8, followed by queen h7, mate. Um, the main thing we have to calculate is the king g7. I mean, Gotta be something good here. Maybe bishop g8 now? Is that is that winning? Probably. Oh wait, he can go rook takes now. Like he could earlier. Hmm. Well, it's white's move, right? Yeah. So maybe. I mean one thing's for sure is like probably play this in game. But the reason is because after bishop c6, <coughs> if we don't play it, do we have any advantage is the question. It's tough to say. But alright, we're going to make these moves on the board just because. Uh, bishop here, king, but g7 is the only move because this allows bishop g8 followed by queen h7 mate. So king g7. Another question is, is bishop g8 better than bishop h6? Hard to say. We'll look at this move again. And we are up a whole... We're down a whole rook, but he's got some ugly little problems here. What about just taking? Isn't this pretty good? Didn't this just win? Alright, so what are we missing here? Bishop c6, bishop d3, take. I mean, this is mate. Like, intuitively, I can't imagine I wouldn't play this in a game. It just looks so crushing. Like, this is, like, the only move I can find that's not completely... I mean, it's, it's not completely unclear. I mean, it just seems to be checkmate. I don't understand. What am I missing here? It's like, whatever he takes back with bishop g8, does he have any other moves? Like, bishop h4 or something ridiculous? I highly doubt it. I mean, we're not even down material there. I mean, I guess it's the only thing to do. But I'm hard pressed to believe this isn't very good for for white. I don't know, go bishop d6 or something. I don't know, man. I just do it. Let's just let's just see what Houdini says. So Houdini's not finding the crushing move yet. Whoops. So like maybe. Oh wow. Okay, so the move we miss, which is very easy to miss. 
Rook takes a3. Oh, holy crap. And what is it? If Rook takes Queen d5, maybe? It just says Bishop takes a3. This was a tough position. I mean, I even moved the pieces and I couldn't figure it out. Um, and after Bishop h3, sorry, after Bishop takes a3, Queen h4, attacking g4 and attacking h7. And this is the position about even <laughs> after Bishop to e7. The queen takes c4, it says queen h3. Like, let's say we do this. Threatening mate on g2. Uh, and then it says the only defense is this, followed by queen queen to g4. And, and black is a perpetual after king f1, queen d1, king g2, queen to g4. So like this is a real this is a real nice puzzle actually because um, well, first of all, it says that after bishop takes, rook takes. Wait, this just remains better. Like, white just has an advantage after bishop e3. With, some, like, some fun attacking potential, pretty much. And, you know, the point in the game is, like, you play the sacrificial line, and at the end... This move rook a3 is the only move to save the day. Somehow it does. Very complex, very tough position, but a very good training puzzle, actually. So, I like this one a lot. Yeah, bishop g6 question mark. Oh, by the way, white is up a pawn in the original position, which somehow I didn't realize. I didn't even notice. I thought I counted, but I was wrong. So, bishop takes g6. And it just, you know, I'm looking at the end of the book, and it, it kind of just says everything that we we saw. Um, another point is, after bishop b7, rook h7 is a move, too, with the idea of bishop takes f7, rook takes f7, queen g6, mate. But black has f5 here. And after e takes f6, still with the idea of bishop f7, bishop d4, and black is okay. <laughs> because I guess if bishop f7 now rook takes, queen g6, rook g7, says this is the only move. Black can only play queen. What? If pawn takes queen c4, I guess, and queen a6, it's just super complicated. King h1, rook f7. I'm just reading this variation now in the book. I mean, this is a very good position for like training your calculation. I'm definitely gonna, I guess, use this one in um one of my camps perhaps because this is just a, a nice nice puzzle. So bishop takes g6, although tempting, is a mistake, and the clear advantage of pawn up with bishop takes c6 should be preferred. Tough, tough puzzle. If you guys calculated all that, you're big champions. A lot of grandmasters would totally miscalculate that. Like, a lot. Trust me. That's a very hard calculation. So, thanks guys for watching, and that's definitely a fitting one for the um, 100th practical chess position that we've done, because that was a, a real doozy. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.